Hey guys, this is Theta. Um, here's another tutorial real quick, and this is how to change the color of shines, like I've done for my, um, the rainbow shine mod I did, and the, the, the USA flag shine, um, the Pepe shine I did one, that's a stupid joke, um, that's different, that's adding a picture into this, but this you can do without, like, any tools, it's just fun, easy thing, uh, pretty quick to do. What you need to do is to you will start. You need to have 3ds Max and you know the files for this. That's pretty much all you need. Um, so Brawlbox 3ds Max and the fitfox.pack or fitfalco.pack works with Falco 2 works with any. Um, it might work with with Wolf's. I'm not sure, but um, I'll just get to the tutorial now. So what you need to do is go into Fitfox and find where it says F Fox Reflector. Uh, that's the model you need, such as Shine. Um, do keep in mind if you want to change his entire shine, you'd also need to change what uh, this this looks like um, because this his shine's actually two different models. On the very first beginning, or when it actually reflects an object, it will make this this is the thing that shows up. Uh, but this is the one that like you know if you hold it um, after the first two or three frames comes out, and that's the one people usually see the most. Um, so. What you need to do is export this to the desktop. You don't have to worry about any uh, textures or anything even. Just put it right on the desktop. DAE. And so now when it's on the desktop, just open it up. And I'm going to cut to 3 is Max actually opening it real quick. Usually it's just, you know, the default. Cameras and lights don't need to be on because you're not adding anything with that. Uh, most important thing here is units. Make sure automatic is turned off and you have inches for the import. And uh, for the export, it should be centimeters. That's the most important thing here. All right, now getting to this, uh, what we're going to want to do first is click on the main part of the shine. The outside of the shine really doesn't matter because uh, it's just kind of like a little glow to it. If you really want to change it, you can. Um, I'm going to be changing the main part of this for this tutorial. What I like to do first is clone it so that I have a backup inside here. And I can just hide that. Uh, but inside here, I'm going to go into my default view. So this is probably what it looked look like uh, for you guys. i turned the grin off too because I don't even see that. So. What you need to do to make sure that you can uh, do this properly is right-click Skin, and where it says Retain Sub-Animation Custom Attributes, click that. Uh, that will make it so that you can cut the skin off, and then if you edit this, you can paste the skin back on later, so you don't have to reskin the object. Um, this is a trick that works for a lot of models, like character models too, uh, depending on the type of edits that you do. As long as the number of you know, dots and vertices, and etc. stays genuinely the same, and you're just editing the model, and not making new stuff to it, uh, skin usually stays on the model so it helps to keep that skin all right so now we're going to go to vertex paint uh, and you can do this inside the edit mesh actually uh, but it's a lot easier to do it here gives you more options so what you're going to do is up here uh, and where it says vertex paint here these left two lets you see the colors of the vertex uh, so we're going to click on the far left one which shows a, uh, shows us the model with the vertex coloring but without any shading, so like you won't get any shadows. So this is the easiest way to see it um, and edit it. So if you press 1, you'll see a bunch of dots. These are the vertices for the model, and the way it works is each one of these vertices has a color. So if I click this one, uh, the color for it is this lightish blue, and then this one up here has the darker blue, and you can see it creates a gradient between the two. So if you wanted to, like, you know, I don't know, change the inner side of the ring. You'd, all you'd have to really do is click all the inside dots um, and change the colors of them to something else. Uh, the cool trick too is um, for each one of these vertex paint layers, you can actually change the type of uh, you know, coloring that it does. So let's say you wanted to keep the shading on this. You could just change it to like um, color and then if I painted the whole thing red it'd still keep the darkness and brightness of these colors but it'd make it red instead. Um, I generally use hue instead of uh, color because it uh, keeps a little bit more of the saturation etc. Um, but if you actually just want to edit it you can go ahead and click here this is the color that you're going to be using. Uh, I'll just make it the shine red for an example. So I'm going to click full red uh, and if I paste I'm in normal mode right now so if I paste it'll just make it that actual color. You can see it pastes it right on there. Um, for the sake of this, though, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make another uh, rainbow shine thing. So uh, the top one will be red. And I like, you know, doing rainbow for this because there's six sides, six colors. It makes sense. And I'm going to change the layer to uh, hue. 
Um, and two important things to note too, guys. Always work with the dots. You actually can work with this, the faces. Like if I click two right here and click um, this surface right here, I can actually paint that surface completely red. Um, I, but the thing is that Brawl does not work with uh, face coloring. It only works with vertex coloring, so you really can't do that. There's no point. Just stick with vertex coloring. Um, so I'm gonna do the top one's gonna be red, and it's in hue mode now. So if I do paint, you can see it's red on top. And so for the next one, I'm gonna click these dots here. You can like you know drag and click to it. Doesn't really matter. You're just selecting what you're painting here. Um, I'm gonna go to orange. That's about orange, right? Yeah. Paint that. That's orange. Now here I'm gonna do yellow. Um, so it's really it's a simple thing to do. It's pretty easy. It doesn't really mess with anything. You know, just like a fun, fun little trick. And you actually can use a brush too. If I wanted to, um, like you know, paint stuff. Now that one's blue. So yeah, I'm gonna finish coloring this real quick. But yeah, you can actually use a brush instead um, to paint these types of things, which is really cool because like, um, there we go. So that's a that's a so there you go. Um, turn off that so it looks like without the lines on it. Um, but if you wanted to use like, you know, let's say you wanted to be more creative with something, use the brush uh, by itself, you can just click on the brush here, and uh, it's kind of big by default, you can change the size, usually like, you know, 5 might be better for this, yeah, so it's a little smaller. So you can see here, um, you have to have all the vertices that you want to affect selected though, so I'm just going to do Control a to select everything. So I brush over these, you can see it kind of, you know, it's a brush, yeah, it works like you'd imagine it too. Um, uh, so... Yeah, that's that's how you um, do vertex coloring for that. And again, make sure to make use of these different things here. They're good for creation. If you use Photoshop, you'll know how they work. Um, but that's how you do the coloring for that. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this. I'm going to do paste instanced. And that will put the skin that I cut off earlier back on the model so that I can just do control A. And now I'll export under the little max option here, do export selected. And that will make it so you, uh, if you have anything hidden, you don't export that. So like the cloned object I had as a backup. And now I just have to call it like, you know, it doesn't really matter. Let's call it shines or whatever. So now back on the desktop, I'll do Fox Reflector. And the important thing here is do re-import meshes. And I'll do the new shine model I have here. Um, so the settings again, oh yeah, for 3ds Max, I forgot to show you, um, for 3ds Max, when you're exporting, export selected, yes, you know, that model, yeah, I'll replace it. Um, again, for animation, you actually are going to want to click this, um, have the settings just like I'm showing here, no extra options, don't bake animation, deformation, you can have morphs if you want to, uh, Brawl doesn't use them. Um, Cameras and lights, again, we're not using them. Make sure that automatic is not checked and it's set to centimeters for export. Um, and these are just other you know, stuff. As we, I think those are default. Uh -huh. So that's those are those settings for that. And for this, these are the settings I use. Um, personally, you can change them to whatever you want. These I found to be the most compatible with whatever I'm importing. Um, so I just click that, and you can see, bam, it's changed the color of the reflector. Pretty easy trick to do. Um, one last thing too, when you re-import the reflector, the bones get messed up a little. So right in here, uh, where it says ref1, I believe, I'll double check just to make sure. Um, two, yeah, there's the reflector. Okay, yeah, so the first ref you want to, where it says right here in, in the bones, click ref1, and for billboard setting, set that to standard perspective. And what that does is it makes it so that you can see if I rotate it around now, it still faces towards me. What that does is it makes the bone of the reflector follow the camera. Um, you know, uh, that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> so you kind of need that. Otherwise, um, when you did a shine with Fox, if you didn't change that setting there, you wouldn't actually see the shine because it'd be facing um, towards the screen and it'd look like a 2D little line. Um, but yeah, that's all you have to do. You can edit colors for this, um, it works for Falco Shine. Anything that uses uh, vertex coloring 
inside there. And you can kind of tell when stuff uses vertex coloring if they've got, like, um, on, on the materials here, if you look inside, and there's, like, nothing to indicate the colors for it. But then if you go in colors here, if you see that there's a bunch of colors, these are the vertex colors here. Um, so that's how you can really tell for that, but that's how that works. Um, I hope you guys like the tutorial. It's a pretty simple one, uh, nonetheless. I think it's pretty useful and pretty fun to do. Uh, so, uh, enjoy. Thanks. Hope you guys liked it.